I'm going to take all this plastic junk and turn it into the biggest diorama I've ever made. Welcome to BP Custom Creations. Quite a while back now, Eric over at Gamey Builds and I decided to do a collab. And we sent each other a box of items that we would have to use in the build. And Eric actually sent a few other things as well, like these lights, some grass, Reese's, which are mysteriously not here anymore. And check this out. He sent me his artwork from his last build. We're going to have to use all... Well, not that. We're going to have to use all of this and make something cool out of it. I started by taking everything apart and out of its bags and boxes to see what I had to work with. There were quite a few pieces, so I stuck it all in a box and continued the disassembly. This car is actually something I'm more familiar with, and I can use that die-cast metal for something cool. There were a ton of other parts, though, that I was pretty surprised about. This little detail here looks like the back of a cockpit, so I'll chop all the other parts off and isolate that piece. I also like the front of this car for the nose of the cockpit. I'll just have to rotate it 90 degrees and get rid of a lot of extra plastic. I use my jeweler saw to take off the hood of this buggy, as well as a few of the other pieces. Diecast metal is really soft, so I was able to bend this around that nose piece. A couple modifications and the steering wheel from the car is now a futuristic steering wheel. I stripped the paint off of the die cast and I mocked everything up on a piece of styrene. Once those plastic pieces were glued in place I had a little bit more of a base to work off of. I want to incorporate this roll cage and the front bars as well. I cut out some sheets of styrene to go inside of the cockpit beside the chair. It'll help block up these holes and it'll give me panels to detail. I used some of these rhinestone stickers and also just chunks of plastic from the various things I cut up earlier. And here's the detail on the other side. Once I glued those in place, I got a better idea of what the inside of the cockpit was going to look like. And I realized that the driver had nowhere for his feet to go. Using the housing of the pullback mechanism, I added some chunkier bits to the sides of the cockpit. And I scavenged some plastic from another toy to build up the base underneath where the pilot's feet would be. I took the two halves of the upper part of the dart gun and I filled the void with styrene. I think these are going to give me some really chunky upper legs. And using some styrene and also some other bits from that toy gun, I was able to add some more detail to the back. And I finally used these doggy poop bags in a build. They'll actually come in quite a few times during this build. And you can see here are the first of those beads from the necklace he sent. Bracelet? Was it a bracelet or a necklace? Okay. I added some styrene to the front under the nose and I trimmed it to fit. Now in the back I wanted to add some styrene and a couple little plastic pegs to allow me to open and close this roll cage, kind of like a hatch. And I'll use this little gate 
from the car wash toy as an antenna on one of the sides of the legs. I got these nice little sewing clips from the dollar store that'll help me hold things together. After some gap filling and adding a couple bits to keep the roll cage in place, I've moved on to making the legs. These rollers are from some kind of tape dispenser refills and I was able to shave them down enough to get them to be symmetrical. I can use the front bit there as the toe, but I'm going to actually fill the gap with EVA foam all the way around the inside of that diameter. EVA foam sticks really nice with super glue. Here's another one of those bag roll inserts. It fits perfectly into this yellow cylinder from the car wash toy. And then an eight millimeter styrene pipe fits perfectly inside of that one. Inside of the styrene pipe fits a five millimeter styrene rod. And we have a makeshift piston going here. We just need a connector that'll make its way onto the toe. I need a section of pipe at an angle. So I shaved down the end of the styrene tube and glued it in place. This was actually pretty difficult. I had to use quite a bit of baking soda. Now these toes are a little bit small, so I grabbed some Gundam feet. And once that little bit of plastic was out of the way, I glued them on with some styrene glue. The footprint is still a little bit small, so I beefed it up a bit with a sheet of styrene. This will also help me balance it on its two feet. Now, in order to save a little bit of time and also to get a little bit more detail than I probably otherwise could, I went into Blender to model up a little chunk of plastic that will fit between these two rollers. At the moment, they're only supported on one side by a really thin sheet of plastic and they wobble all over the place. This part will help give some stability. I modeled a bunch of detail on one side that I decided not to use and I actually end up using this other side which is kind of just stripes. They fit perfectly and everything is really tight and snug. Once that was all together, I could test fit it to the perfect angle and then glue everything together with some super glue. With the legs done, I wanted to move on to using these beads and I had an idea in my head that I didn't, couldn't quite figure out how to make happen until I thought of just using some wire. My inspiration for this strange ball was the Beryllium Sphere from Galaxy Quest. If you haven't seen that movie, you really should. It's an excellent film. Anyway, my first idea was to use clay uh, to kind of mold a sphere with the beads sticking out from it. I don't have any good clay to use for that at the moment, so by using wire, I could kind of thread the beads on and then just pack them in around the center. I started with the larger beads and worked out to the smaller and smaller to the smallest beads, and I think it worked really well. And just to hold everything in place, I coated it with some Mod Podge. Now, once in a while, you get one of those pieces that fits perfectly. Look at this piece. And wait, the tire fits perfectly on the speaker hole. And wait, there's more. These inner grip details from that dart gun fit perfectly underneath and around the wheel. This thing was pretty much done. There's just a few more details that need to get added. I added some Hot Wheels wheels underneath and these cone shaped beads are gonna be really useful for adding wires later.
Now that the mech was built and the ball was all done, it was time to move on to the base. I set aside the bottom of this car wash toy as I thought it would be a really good sci-fi door. I didn't like how circular it looked, so I wanted to widen its footprint to about 15 centimeters and try to mask that circular appearance a little bit. For this door, I wasn't sure what I wanted it to look like, so I started out by just sketching with a pencil on some card. That just allows you to try multiple times before you get it right. I cut out my favorite design and transferred it to the styrene. I recently found these train cars at my dollar store here in Japan. They're made out of styrene and they're insanely detailed. I don't really care to use them as a train car, but these look awesome for sci-fi greebly. Adding some more bag cores and sheets of styrene, I was able to detail it up even more. And here you can see I added some wire to the mech inside of those beads. Now it's time to make a mess. I used a multi-bladed onion slicer to score a bunch of horizontal lines into this XPS foam. And then I used a wire brush to scrape out a whole bunch of that foam once it was loose. Oh man, this made such a huge mess. I had to vacuum my whole room after this. I want to inset this greebled out train car detail into the stone wall. So I'll cut a hole to press that in. And I do the same for the door. I thought these would look cool if they were kind of flush with the front surface. The roof of the car wash toy is going to be the base that this strange alien orb is floating on top of. I also used a cylinder from the inside of that dart gun as a kind of exhaust and press fit one of my 3D designed vents into it. You may have noticed that one of the details on that wall is a pipe that's kind of pointing downwards at an angle. I thought it would be interesting to have some wires and cables coming out of that and going to this uh, base that the sphere will float on top of. So I braided up some cables and I twisted the ends. And it's looking pretty cool. I outlined the position of all the larger parts and went ahead and used cork to add some more uh, raised variation to the base. I used PVA and hot glue to glue the giant rock wall in place and then all the cork just hot glue. Time for some yogurt. Greek yogurt very thirsty Greek yogurt. Basically what I'm mixing up right now is a base layer that's gonna prime and protect and harden and all that good stuff in one go. It's a mixture of plaster, sand, paint, a little bit of PVA glue, and of course water. I started mixing up a more warmer red color, but then I decided to go with a dark gray. I'm really happy with this rock wall texture. I think it looks awesome and I'm gonna use it for something else in the future. I brought out my old mat so I wouldn't get anything that messy and everything goes primed up. Moving over to the airbrush booth, I hit all of these sci-fi greeblies with a silver. And I used a very thinned down black to shade. I picked out all the details that I wanted to be lights or screens inside of the cockpit and I painted them metallic silver. This will allow me to go back with a translucent brighter color and make it look like it's glowing a bit. The smallest diameter rod for the pistons got metallic silver and I sponged on a yellow orange color over the rest of the shaft. The lower legs got 
overbrushed with a really like brown orange color. It came out almost bronze in the end. And I went back to the airbrush booth to undercoat the roll cage. And also, I wanted to undercoat a glowing effect on all these little beads of that ball. While I have the white in the airbrush, I might as well do a little object source lighting on the base. I think this came out okay. It's one of my first times trying this. The roll cage got yellow. And the creepy alien ball got a nice turquoise color. I made sure to hit the base and then I added a little bit of white ink to that turquoise and went over the centers again. Using a mixture of metallic bronze and metallic silver, I dry brushed over the black primer and this is a really cool metal effect that I like the way that it came out. I painted up all the little screens and buttons and lights on the inside of the cockpit. and use some Tamiya panel liner for the inside of the vent. And then I mixed up a light brown wash and just a little bit of weathering. I didn't want it to look too rusty or anything out in this really dry climate, but I did want it to look dirty and perhaps a bit oxidized. After weathering up a few other bits, I used some more of the Tamiya panel liner on the feet and a couple more details such as the inside of these wheels and also the sides of these legs. I thought the base was wet but these parts here that are darker just happen to be a darker color for some reason. Maybe the paint wasn't mixed all the way. But I dry brushed everything. And I hit it with a couple different dark brown and black washes to get into the recesses. Once that was done, I dry brushed on a little bit of light yellow brown called Middle Stone. And I used my airbrush to paint the concrete light gray. After the sand and the rock, I got a light dry brush of beige. I started scraping some pastels to use as pigment powder. Knowing that I had a lot of area to cover with the pastels, I kind of stumbled upon a new technique. This works well because the ground that I'm using here is so hard and kind of abrasive. I used the pastels directly onto it, almost like drawing. And then I used this large makeup brush to kind of blend it all together. I suggest you try this out on whatever your project is. It might work depending on the situation, but it worked really well for this kind of application. Of course I needed to weather the other bits as well. And then I painted the rim and the size of the diorama with black. This challenge was huge. It was a ton of work. This is the biggest thing I've ever made for the channel. You guys gotta go check out Eric at Gamey Builds. He does everything that I do, but better. You're gonna love his videos and you're gonna love what he makes. As always, I need to give a huge shout out to my Patreon supporters. Jimmy G, Adam, Andrew Price, Michael Dottie, Spaghetti a la mode, Harker, Kitsch, Paul Bactel, GC Hayes, John Stay Most of Vacation, Gamey Builds, and of course, all of you lovely dollar store enablers. You guys are the best. As you may be able to tell from my voice, I'm a little bit under the weather right now, but I really appreciate everyone coming to watch the video. Feel free to comment any questions you have down below or tell me what you thought about the build. That's gonna be it for this one, guys. I'll see you on the next build.